Welcome to the course, Digital Storytelling. My name is Luca Peskoretz. Okay, let's say we have a folder. This is the final result that you want to get. Okay, so these are your, um, th these are the 100, uh, 100 pieces from uh, last mid, re uh, or for the mid review. And basically I want to show you how you can sort of automate creation of collages um, like this. So basically what I did here is um, every image was kind of changed into a thumbnail. We uh, edited every image um, so that we get kind of a sort of consistent colors and uh, it was sort of cropped. And then it was also separately, they were all renamed. And then uh, additionally, we kind of created sort of this collage. Or so this we can do relatively fast in Photoshop to kind of automate basically production of these. You can imagine that if you're working maybe in an office, maybe you have a folder of images and you want to put them online. And then somebody says, okay, uh, you know, you have 100 images, make them all square and change the color. And then you spend whole afternoon basically doing that, but you can automate this. Uh, so I just want to show you how to do that. So um, first component, uh, and yeah, here I'm just using the work from, uh, from the mid review. Uh, so I have here, for example, a folder uh, with portrait images. And let's just take one here, uh, just put it in. Okay, so the first, first, um, um, component is, uh, or kind of first step that I have to show you is how to do actions. Or so it is actually possible to automate, um, to automate kind of execution in Photoshop, uh, and we can record this. Uh, we can record this, and then we can kind of execute it. Um, um, you know, we can execute it for different for different images. Okay, so I have an image here. Actually, I just realized that. I will save, uh, let me just say, I will just take a few images here, maybe this one, this one, maybe four of them, like uh, maybe like this. Okay, and I will copy paste them just here because I want to save the originals at least in this. Okay, so then we take one image, I come here. Okay, so here on the right, there is um, this history tab, but actually there's a, there's an actions tab. So there's history and actions. And if you don't have it here, it's probably somewhere on the window actions. You can kind of uh, turn it on here. Okay, so there are already some pre-scripted uh, pre um, actions here. Um, um, I, they kind of come default with the software, but basically I created my own and I'll show you how uh, you can create your own. Also, you go here, it's a new action. And then we can call it, I'll just call it um, thumbnail test. Thumb nail test okay you say record okay and you can see here there's a small red circle it means now everything you do on this image will be recorded okay so i can for example um let's do something so i can maybe go here under uh yeah maybe go here under crop it's a crop button okay i can change here to aspect ratio square um press enter and then now it kind of cropped it onto a square um now I want to maybe change um, the size of the image. I go here, image, image size. And uh, let's say I want to change the resolution. So uh, pixels per inch to maybe 72. So maybe it's, it's going to be a, a small thumbnail on the, um, uh, it's gonna be a small thumbnail somewhere. Uh, so I want to uh, make it much smaller and maybe I want to round this up to maybe 300 or something like that. Uh, and I press okay. And you can see that these actions are recorded here. So every step I do, it's recorded. It says thumbnail test, there's a crop, there's image size. And if, even if you open it, you can see some parameters uh, that are kind of saved basically from, from that action. Okay, I think here, this is fine. So now this is sort of a smaller image and I can maybe go to image also adjustments, hue saturation, and maybe do the final thing is put here colorize, uh, lightness to 50, saturation to 50, and hue to 300, so I got kind of a pinkish hue. Okay, and yeah, that's it. So I can just also save it, file save. This is now also an, uh, an action. And um, yeah, there are different ways to do this, but you can I can just kind of close this. If I close it now, I also saved the close command, but I have to kind of go back to these actions. Um, they're here, okay, I'm kind of still being, see, still recording, but now I can press uh, stop. And I can just delete this make uh, action at the very end. There's a small delete, uh, garbage, garbage can. Okay. And now I have 
this thumbnail test has crop, has image, hue saturation, saving and closing the window. Okay, so this is now one action. I can minimize it here and I can execute it for different images. Or so I can go, for example, again, um, this one was saved, but I can, for example, now open these three other images that I have here. Uh, let me just see. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, could just drag and drop it here. Okay, so uh, uh, you now have these different images here opened in, in a tab and I can just click here on this history. These are actions. I can click on a different action, this one here, thumbnail test, and I can just say play. Say play, basically uh, all the actions were executed and even the, the image was closed or so it's kind of disappeared from here. And I can press it again, do it for this image and press it again. Um, that's it. So basically I press it now three times and this action was repeated for uh, all the other images that were in this fall uh, that I kind of opened. Uh, and of course, you can kind of argue, well, cropping, you have to be careful with cropping because you have portrait or landscape image, uh, you can get a bit, sometimes a bit weird results. And you can imagine that, in, you know, you can use hue and saturation um, command only if you have RGB image or color image. If you have a grayscale, this doesn't work. So you have to be a bit careful what kind of goes in. But uh, yeah, if you're a bit careful and have experience, you can kind of make it general enough. And, uh, and of course, now the question is, well, okay, perfect. But what if I want to do now this for, um, I have, um, I have a whole folder of images. Do I have to open them in Photoshop and just kind of, um, you know, go one by one? Yes, but actually you can also do it uh, in an automatic way. So let's do here a new folder. I'll just call it uh, portrait images. Okay. And so let's just copy from uh, this, uh, some images here from you that are in portrait mode. Let's not take too many. Let's take some. This is now 20, uh, 20 items selected. We just copy paste them here. And here the trick is that somehow this action that I just recorded uh, works a bit differently for portrait and landscape images. That's why I have here sort of two folders for landscape and portrait, but basically, um, um, yeah, you, you have to kind of always play a little bit. Uh, it's better if the images are kind of as similar as possible, at least in terms of format. Uh, okay, so let's, run the batch action on all of these images here in a folder. So if I go here in Photoshop, uh, I can go here in the file, automate batch, that's very useful. So this is like, this save this to me saved, um, I guess days and days of work. Okay, so here I can uh, select an action. Then all the actions that you saw on the, re on the right are here. And um, the last one that I created is thumbnail test. Source is a folder and I can choose a folder and I just have to now find the correct folder. Here it is, portrait images, select folder. And that's it. You can also, there are some other options like uh, you can kind of also apply to all the subfolders, but we don't have subfolders, so it's fine. And if I just say, okay, you will see that kind of Photoshop is now uh, opening every image and applying the action and then um, yeah, closing the image. I think I'm not even sure if this close is necessary at the end. Um, I'm not sure if save is necessary, so you have to kind of experiment with it. But for any, in any case, I have this save in and kind of closing. Or, but basically, this action is just now applied on all the on all the images. Okay, and that's it. And uh, now, when the thumbnails here update, hopefully soon, they're all up, updated. Or so now I have them. Basically, the action was applied to all the images, and as you can see, sometimes there's some. For some images, of course, I get a bit weird results. Um, if they have maybe some, yeah, yeah, I for sure get some weird results here. So maybe this was not, uh, yeah, the crop is, crop is maybe not the best way. Uh, yeah, the, the crop is maybe not the best action to, to use. Maybe something like canvas size, um, image size, canvas size is kind of better. So you have to be always careful with cropping. Let me actually do this. Um, and just do this again. So if you want to reverse here, I think you could just say Control Z. Just okay. Control Z. Uh -huh. Just delete them all. Okay. And just put more images inside. Let me just see. Let's take them again. So let's do this just a little bit better. Uh, but this is the general procedure. So uh, these are portrait, and let's record an action again. 
So maybe you take this one here a little bit in a different way. So again, I go uh, here under file, new action, uh, thumbnail test two. Okay. Now we record, uh, we will not do the crop. Maybe we do something like uh, we can do, go image. Maybe we first we change image size. So again, here we reduce the pixels per inch. Now this, um, we will fix the width to 300. Uh, okay, the height is then of course scaled appropriately, but then I want to make it square. So I can go to image again, canvas size. And here um, I change the height to 300. So now it will kind of just squeeze it, okay. Now I'm gonna maybe do a, something similar again, hue saturation. And uh, yeah, let's maybe do and something similar, 50, 50, 300. Okay, save. Um, I just pressed Control S and you didn't see it, but uh, I can close it, okay. And then somehow these actions disappeared. So I have to bring them back here, stop recording and delete the last one. Okay, and now I have this thumbnail test, test two. And um, yeah, so this one is already changed. So you can just delete it from here. And let me just apply this action again. Uh, so file, so in Photoshop people file again, automate batch. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Thumbnail test two is applied to a folder, portrait images, select. And let's see now. So I think this uh, procedure with um, sort of image size and then canvas will give us a bit better results uh, than this cropping. But yeah, if you want, for example, just scale image, uh, so just kind of make it you know half the size, and um, change maybe into black and white, uh, do some sort of a consistent color editing. Um, this batch is uh, for sure a way to go. Go back here. Okay, and uh, yeah, now they look much much better. I just realized there's twenty of them, or nineteen of them. So I'll just maybe add one. Let's, um, yeah, just realize maybe we just add one. Um, okay. Okay, so this is how we get these um, sort of thumbnails. And now the last thing that I want to quickly show you is, let's try to arrange them into this, um, uh, into this grid. So again, there is, uh, there's, there's a kind of quick way to do this in Photoshop as well. This already goes a little bit into sort of scripting, but we will not do scripting, but we will run basically Photoshop script. Uh, and I think this one, this one should come um, as default in Photoshop. So if you go here, file, automate, contact sheet too. So actually you can download this, um, this, these scripts uh, from online. There's like, you know, millions, millions of them. Actually there are some of them are also here under scripts, but basically you can automate, for example, if you kind of, kind of creating a, um, yeah, like a, you're basically kind of printing multiple images on one sheet. So you can use this contact, contact sheet. And, um, and yeah, then we just have to choose here, source images are from a folder, we choose um, this portrait images. Uh, and yeah, uh, here's include subfolders. And then here we choose, okay, what's the size? So maybe, um, maybe we do, uh, what is that? Yeah, the width is maybe 50 by whatever, 30 or maybe 50 by 40 um, centimeters. And then I know that we have 20, images so we will do something like five times four so that's why five four no actually five times yeah five times four is five times four is 20 correct <laughs> okay so columns how many columns do we have uh we have four columns actually with this 40 height is 50 and then we can maybe have um columns sorry we can have four columns and five rows, and then we can use here uh, auto spacing or so basically we're gonna arrange it into four by five grid on a paper that is 40 by 50. And again, you need to test a little bit to get the best results. Um, so now Photoshop will just take all of the images that I have in the folder and it will arrange them on the paper uh, in that kind of order. And of course I chose the size of the uh, page so that they fit nicely, but let's see. Uh, this is kind of done in the background, so you don't really see the results in between, but okay, that's it. And somehow there's some weird cropping here, one pixel here. 
but somehow multiple pixels here. I don't know why. I guess it's a bit. So we'll just crop it additionally here. Okay, crop. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's kind of a like a small collage. Uh, let me just save this as JPEG. <clears throat> Um, submission grid smaller. Okay, and of course, I mean, you can imagine you can do this also by hand, but sometimes for some of these, um, you can do kind of, um, you can sort of automate certain things in Photoshop, which is uh, quite cool. Uh -huh. And the last thing that I want to show you is not related to Photoshop. Uh, so we'll turn off the uh, Photoshop here. But if you have access to Adobe Bridge, so Adobe Bridge is, uh, also comes with this um, uh, Adobe, what is that, uh, Creative Suite, Suite kind of um, package, you can install it. It's for file management, it's actually opening on a different window. Okay. And um, again, you can do this in different ways, uh, but with Bridge, you can do it. Uh, we are going to rename all the files in a folder. So I have, again, these portrait images, and here there are your names, but let's say we want to uh, remove the names. You want to have some generic, um, um, some generic uh, name for all of these. So I want to rename all the all the files. So I can do this quickly in Bridge. I can go here. I have to first find the folder. It's here. Portrait images. I select all of them, and then I go under Tools, Battery Name, and uh, I hope you can see it. Um, Okay, somehow, yeah, okay, it's just a minute, yeah, okay. I hope you can still see, okay. Um, yeah, I hope you can still see my screen, we are here. Um, again, window or tools, battery name, and here, somehow I cannot move this for some reason. Uh, okay, I can call it digital storytelling 2021, um, so this, so this means that I will rename it so that at the beginning I have this text and then I will have a sequence number which start from one and I can choose how many digits, maybe two digits in this case. And here it says the, okay, the first file is called like this. It will be renamed into this. And I can actually add different things. I can add, uh, I think I can add something. I can add, you know, so I, I, I can have like a um, sequence number, sequence letter, date, folder name, so I can kind of add different parts to the name. Uh, I can, for example, put um, um, put somehow a date or time of creation into the name, and then I can order everything alphabetically according to this time, time of creation, so I can have a different ordering of my files. Okay, but if I just use these settings and uh, I just say rename, it's very quick. Suddenly they all kind of uh, change names and that's it. So now in the folder, um, I have then their, their names just changed. So the order is still the same as before, but uh, they're just called now one, two, you know, digital storytelling 2021, and then just some numbers. That's it. So I can also quickly rename files. And if you ever, if you ever had to rename manually files in a folder, you will be grateful to know how to do this uh, using Adobe Bridge. Okay, that's actually it.